So, Sarah's just shown you the code. And one of the nice things about using Hadoop Streaming is that it's really easy to test your code outside of Hadoop. So let's take a look at how to do that. Our mapper takes input from standard input. So in order to test it, we can just run it from the command line and type data in to test it. Here, I'm just typing as standard input a couple of lines of sample data, six fields separated by tabs. And then when I hit Control D to simulate the end of input, you can see that the mapper outputs the results just as I'd expect. Even better, we can just build a small sample data file and pipe that into the mapper. So let's do that. I'm going to just take the first 50 lines of purchases.txt and save those into a test file, which I'll call test file. Now I can just pipe that to the mapper by saying cat test file, pipe that to mapper.py, and that gives mapper that data as standard input, and as you can see, the mapper produces its output again to the command line. If we had problems, we could just go back and edit the mapper until it worked. It's really nice and fast to be able to do this without having to run a complete Hadoop job every time during the development phase. We can do a similar thing with the reducer. It's expecting a set of lines, each of which looks like the store name, then a tab, then the value. So again, we can create a sample file which looks like that and pass it into the reducer. But even nicer, we can test the entire pipeline. Remember that the mapper's output is sorted by the Hadoop framework and then passed to the reducer. So we can simulate the entire thing on the Unix command line like this. I cat test file, I pipe it to the mapper, I then pass that to the Unix sort command and pass that output to the reducer. When I run that, that simulates the entire map followed by shuffle and sort followed by reduce phase and as you can see, I've got the output from the reducer. So. Now that we've tested this on the command line, we can test it on the cluster. The best practice when you're developing MapReduce jobs is first test locally with a small data set before you run your code on the entire huge set of data. So now that we've tested on the command line, we can test our code on the cluster. Best practice when you're developing MapReduce jobs is to first test with a small data set before you run your code on your entire huge set of data. But we're already pretty confident here, so let's just run the thing on the whole purchases.txt file. We'll use the hs alias to save some typing. I specify my mapper, my reducer, my input directory, and a new output directory which we'll call output2. And off Hadoop goes, it starts running the job. It turns out that we can see what's going on on the cluster by taking a look at the Hadoop Job Tracker web user interface. So you point your web browser at the job tracker, which on our machine is just localhost on port 50030. And here you can see that there's just one running job. If we click on the job name, then that takes us to a page which shows us the progress of the job and a lot of other interesting information as well. We can drill down and look at the individual map or reduce tasks just by clicking on the words map or reduce. And here we can see that two tasks have completed, two tasks are still running. If I click on one of the completed tasks, I can even go as far as to look at the logs from that task. So here's our job. We're now 25% of the way through our reducers. As you can see, we get graphs at the bottom of this page to show us exactly what's happening with the job. So, we're nearly finished with the job. When the job's finished, Hadoop FS minus LS of output 2 shows me that just as I'd expect, there's a part dash 0000 file in there. And just as we did before, we can Hadoop FS minus cat that file to see our actual results.